Welcome to the first edition of Modex Shorts. Uh, this is a new video series I would like to do about just some short video tutorials about some elements of Modex and how you can use them to create a powerful website. And the first one I'd like to start with the basics is chunks. Uh, Modex chunks are a really important part of the Modex templating system and they're really powerful if you want to create a nice website. So let's get started. So what are Modex chunks? Uh, chunks are basically small parts of static code, usually HTML, uh, that you can reuse, you can save a little bit, a little chunk or snippet or how you want to call it, uh, a little bit of code. You can save it in ModX on one location and you can reuse it throughout your ModX website. So on the ModX uh, documentation it says chunks are bits of static text which you can reuse across your site. So that's it's really basic in, in the core of it. It's just a way to edit multiple sections of your site in one place and to reuse the same block of code. Um, so the basic usage is really easy. It's simply two, uh, two dashes and a, a dollar sign and then the name of your chunk. You place this in your Monex template. That's basically it. So what I wanna do, I wanna create a little bit of code. So let's go and say I'm creating a picture element in my ModX website. So I'm going to I'm going to do that now. I got a fresh installation of ModX Revolution. I'm going to elements, new chunk. So I'm creating a new chunk. I'm calling it a picture element. Uh, I'm not fitting this in right now. And let's put in just some code. I already created this. Um, basically, it's a, it's a it's a, an element with a name of Bob uh, and uh, Bob uh, works as a web designer and he has a secret identity. This is like a, a little chunk on our website that we're gonna reuse and his secret, secret identity is Batman. So I'm gonna save this, this chunk. So now we have a picture element chunk and it has some content in it. This can be anything. If we now go, uh, my site is now clean by the way, there's nothing in here yet. If I go to my template in ModX, here's our content. Let's say we add our chunk here now. Picture element, so I'm using the two symbols, then the dollar sign, and then the name of our chunk. Save, maybe we clear our cache. And if I now refresh, here's our code. That's the chunk I just created. So that works. And I can, if let's say, on one page I reuse this a lot. Maybe we have three of them. You see three of them. And if I then change our chunk here, the picture element chunk, if I change Bob to James, it will be changed on all three of them. So it's a really efficient way to localize your code. But of course, this is not really basic and it's not really flexible yet. Let's say we have different chunks. They're all basically the same, but they have different names, of course, and maybe different superhero secret identities at night. So let's let's start with that now. Um, first of all, we can use property values. Let me show you this one. Um, in our template, instead of our code picture element, we can use this one, picture element, and then a question mark. And then we can create uh, our variables, or actually uh, our uh, properties is the correct name. So let's say we have our property person, George, his job is web designer, and he's a hero, he's Batman. So let's save this one. This is the picture element we're gonna call. And now inside our chunk, we can use those values. So let's update the chunk a little bit. Uh, Instead of James, web designer and Batman, I'm placing there uh, person, job, and hero. Those are the values we just created. As you can see, they're the same symbols, but with a plus this time. The plus means that it's, an, uh, uh, it's a property, the property of the element. So if we save this, it should work. As you can see, it's George, web designer, and Batman. Um, you can also see uh, there are the, the symbols there. Uh, I can actually remove this one. Uh, 
as you can see. So we don't really need those uh, asterisks, I think is the name of it. So let's do it like that. I'm gonna edit that in my code as well. So now we, we have a really flexible way of, of having a, a variable inside our chunk. So inside our template, we can now yeah, decide what the content of the chunk is. That's useful. But if we want to go further, let's say our client uh, or the site admin needs to be able to change it. And he's probably, it's probably not a good idea that the admin will go inside of your template code. So we could replace these values uh, with template variables. Um, so let's start with creating a few template variables now to edit these three fields. So the first one uh, will be an, the person, the name of the person. So let's go to here, elements, and then create a new template variable. Now I'm creating a template variable called picture element person. Name of the person. I'm gonna give it a caption. The input will be a text field and the template access will be to our base template. That's my active template. You always have to remember to assign the correct template to your template variable. So let's save this one. Now we have our template variable. Um, I'm gonna create another one, uh, picture element job to give the job. Uh, an easy way is to just to duplicate the, the one we just created and keep the settings. That will keep the, the template assignment the same. So that way you, you can create faster uh, the same type of template variable. So if you now click on this one, the name is different, but the rest is the same. And now we can simply update this one. Uh, so job, and save it. And finally, we need a superhero uh, identity. So copy the job again the template variable, change the name, save the values of it. And now we have a third template variable called hero, picture element hero, uh, hero type of the person. Save it. Okay, now if we go to our resources, we only have one page, the home page yet, but that's, not, not, that's fine. And if you now see template variables, there are the three variables we just created. So let's create a nice one. Let's say uh, 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 Jan, and the job is uh, developer, and he's Spider-Man at night. That's the hero type. So how do we use this code? We assign the template variables, and for each of our pages and resources, the site admin can decide the values. If we now go to our chunk, we can simply update these values. Um, instead of this one, person, we are now changing this plus symbol for a, st uh, a star. And now we enter simply picture, picture element person. That's the value we created here. So let me copy this and replace these two as well. So this will be job and this will be hero. So we added our template variables inside of our chunk. And if I refresh, it works as you can see, Jan developer Spider-Man. This way the site admin does not have to go inside chunk it doesn't have to go in templates. It just stays in his resource. It, the admin clicks on home and goes to template variables and can change the value here. Miranda. So, as you can see, that works very nicely. Another very useful feature uh, for ModX uh, in combining with chunks uh, that I would like to show you uh, is how to be able to use template variables to select which, which chunk is needed at a certain point. So let's say uh, we have this element on our page, but let's say there are two versions of this uh, image field. There might be uh, one with an image, a white version, and a small version without an image. 
So let's say that our site admin needs to be able to choose on a page basis which chunk it wants to use, if it wants to use an image or not. Uh, to do this, there are a lot of ways in ModX, like everything in ModX, but uh, let's use one um, an, using an output filter. Um, so we're going to create a template variable called wide or small. With this template variable, we will be able to choose if we want a wide version of our chunk or a small version of our chunk. So let's go to elements, new template variables, and I'm entering this, wide or small. Use a wide or small version. I'm adding a, a description actually here, and then I will call the caption wide or small. So this is just a little bit of explanation for the end user. Uh, now I'm going to go to template access and access our template again. Don't forget this one. And I'm going to do something else, input options. I'm selecting radio options. This will allow me to create a preset of options that the end user will be able to select, but it will only be able to select one of the available options. And here I'm going to uh, enter the following, uh, this one. This code will be below the video. Uh, here, let me explain. Uh, I'm creating two options. These are divided by this, these two lines. First one is called wide picture container and the value for it will be wide. This sets the value to, to uh, um, and there's also a small picture container. So we have two options, wide picture container and the small picture container. So that's how we set it. And it's not going to be allowed to be blank. You have to choose an option and the default value will be the wide value. So let's save this one. If we now go to our resource, our homepage, you should see another version, the wide or small, with a little description. And the wide has been preset, as you can see. And you can choose one of them. So how do we use this? Well, let's go again inside our template. Uh, and I'm going to replace our chunk call with a, an output filter. Let me, it looks complicated, but it really is not very complicated at all. Uh, I'm going to place this here. What this does, this calls a template variable, the one we just created, white or small. And if the value is, so that's with this one I say, if it is wide, which is the default, then it will call the picture element wide chunk, which we still have to create. We're going to create that next. Otherwise, it will call the picture element small. I'm actually going to remove this one. Um, I'm going to keep this one. We already have created this one, uh, this, the, the picture element. Um, so I can keep it like this. This is our existing element. And we're just going to create another chunk that's based on this one, but that has a different name. OK, so I'm going to copy this name, save it. And now I'm going to my chunks. I'm going to copy our existing chunk, right click. I'm calling it picture element wide, the wide version. And this time I'm going to add something inside our container, maybe an image. And our image should, of course, also be a value that the end user will be able to select. So I'm going to add a picture element image template variable. So now we have a lot of template variables. We have an image, a person, a job, a hero, and a template variable that allows the end user to select which chunk it should use. So uh, we finally need to, to create this one, the picture element image template variable. Save it. So as you can see now we have two chunks. Uh, I'm going to create another template variable. Uh, this time I'm calling it the picture element image. Uh, let's call this uh, person image. And in the description, I'm going to let the end user know that it, uh, it, this will only be visible when they select wide. So let's say this uh, image will 
something like this. You can change it, of course, to whatever you like. Um, since it's an image, I'm going to say that the input option is an image instead of a text, and the te template axis should be set, of course. So, save this one. And if we now go to our home page, we should have a few options here. We have the name of the person, the developer and Spider-Man, wide or small. And the new one, per person image, image will only be visible on white image containers. So as you can see, this has a little link to that one. Uh, now we can maybe select an image. Um, let's uh, let's add something. Let, let's uh, let's go at uh, Spider-Man. Let's Google for a nice Spider-Man image. So let's download this one to our desktop. ID, save it. So we have the Spider-Man image. I'm gonna add our Spider-Man image here. So we can select it. As you can see here, now we have Spider-Man. And if I clear the cache, we should be able to see our image. It's not working. Let me check for a second. Okay, you guys probably noticed I had here instead of screen I had URL so that doesn't work for images of course <laughs> it should be SRC so there's the path so if I save it as you can see now there's spider-man and she works excuse me around that works as a developer and the secret identity is spider-man so if the admin now goes to home and if it selects the small picture container it will use the other one and it will not use the image. That's a nice example of how to use two chunks with an output filter. Finally, I'd like to show you something else. Um, we already created the image, so that should be smaller. Uh, you can do this another way. Uh, so let's say we have our picture element image. We have that one. We can also say if it is not empty, so if there's not an, uh, there if somebody selects an image, then it will use the picture element wide. Otherwise, it will use the small one. That's also a way to do it, and that way we don't even need this option, the wide or small option. It should work the same way. Uh, Spider-Man is selected, so it will use the wide one, um, but there's nothing selected it will use the small one just to show you there's no image div here so it's not using that at all so that's the that's the idea um, I also saw I made a typo here as you can see I'm making a lot of typos at the moment so I will post all this code below the video I hope you enjoyed it and Hope, hope you notice how flexible and powerful ModX is. Thank you for watching.